Hello, welcome to our first virtual book talk of the 2020-2021 school year. Today I'm going to be talking about this book I read um, last spring called A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. So first I'm going to show you a little bit about her. Okay, okay so this is Holly Jackson, the author, and this is her first book, which is the one I'm going to be talking about today. The sequel is coming out next year. And it's going to be called Good Girl, Bad Blood. It looks like this. Okay, so it's a little bit about this book. This is a crime or mystery novel. Uh, this is the author's first book. And um, I'm not a huge fan of crime, mystery, suspense sort of books, but this one really got me hooked. Uh, the characters were so lovable, um, so interesting, and it really um, made me want to rush through to get to the ending and find out what happened. So. Basically, this is about um, a girl who in her small town, there was a murder or what they allege is a murder, but she doesn't think that it actually was. So she knows the girl um, who was allegedly murdered. She's a couple years older than her and she knows the person who everybody thinks did it. So the girl's name was Andy. She was dating a boy named Sal and everybody in the town thinks that Sal killed him or killed her. But she knew Sal when she was growing up. She was friends with him. Um, they were a couple years older than her, but everybody in the town knew them. And she thought that he was such a great person. How could he have done this? She could never have seen him doing this. But the catch is um, Sal committed suicide or allegedly committed suicide in her words. And before he did, he left a message saying that he is the one that did it. But she just doesn't think that it adds up. She's like, this, this is wrong. I can tell, I know that he's not the one that did this. And so she starts investigating, starts looking into it with his younger brother. So she goes to his house and she's like, I don't think your brother did it. Um, I'm gonna improve, I'm doing my capstone project over your brother and Andy, and I'm going to prove that he didn't do it because I think he's innocent. But it's a lot harder to do because the two people who are involved are at least allegedly in the book dead. So I'm going to read you the first couple of pages. So it starts out, Senior Capstone Project Proposal 2019-2020, student number 4169. Student's full name, Pippa Fitz Imobi. Part A, to be completed by a student. The courses of study or area of interest to which the topic relates. English, journalism, investigative journalism, criminal law. Working title of senior capstone project. Research into the 2014 missing persons investigation of Andy Bell in Fairview, Connecticut. Present the topic to be researched in the form of a statement, question, or hypothesis. A report on how print, televised, and social media have become key players in police investigations, using Andy Bell as a case study, and the implications of how the press presented Sal Singh and his alleged guilt. My initial resources will be interview with missing persons expert, interview with a local journalist who reported on the case, newspaper articles, interviews with members of the community, textbook and articles on police procedure, psychology, and the role of media. Supervisor's comments. Pippa, this is an incredibly sensitive topic as it concerns a terrible crime that happened in our town. Your project has been accepted only on the condition that no ethical lines are crossed. Please find a more focused angle for your report as you work through your research. And there is to be no contact made with either of the families involved in this case. This will be considered an ethical violation and your project will be disqualified student declaration. I certify that I have read and understood the regulations as set out in the notice to students. Signature, Pippa Fitz Imobi. Pip knew where they lived. Everyone in Fairville knew where they lived. Their home was like the town's own haunted house. People's footsteps quickened as they walked by and their words strangled and died in their throats. Shrieking children would gather on their walk home from school daring one another to run up and touch the front gate. But it wasn't haunted by ghosts. 
Just three sad people trying to live their lives as before. A house not haunted by flickering lights or spectral falling chairs, but by dark spray painted letters of scum family and stone shattered windows. Pip had always wondered why they didn't move. Not that they had to, they hadn't done anything wrong, but she didn't know how they lived like that. How the Sings found the strength to stay here, here in Fairview, under the weight of so many widened eyes, of the comments whispered just loud enough to be heard, of neighborly small talk never stretching into real talk anymore. It was a particular cruelty that their house was so close to Fairview High School, where both Andy Bell and Sal Singh had gone, where Pip would return for her senior year in a few weeks when the late summer sun dipped into September. So, just a quick book talk. I wanted to recommend this to you guys because I thought it was fantastic. I'm really excited for the next one to come out uh, in the spring. We've got both the physical copy and a digital copy on Sora. You can read it, you can listen to the audiobook on Sora as well. I really encourage you to check these out if you like suspense, mystery, a little teeny tiny, tiny bit of romance. But if you don't like romance, it's not really a big deal and you can look over it. Um, this is written with sort of a case study uh, type of notations throughout it so it helps you kind of follow along with the story and you kind of feel like you're solving it with the characters um, it's a great book I'd really recommend it check us out if you're interested in reading